Pangea. Now, how do we know about Pan- Pangea? Seems to look like it fits like a puzzle. Yeah. How do we know about Pangea? How do we learn that? Well, part of the the, the fact that it does fit together like a puzzle, uh, and one of the index fossils um, is it Lystrosaurus? I think it's Lystrosaurus was found in South America and, and Africa and basically everywhere. So when you, if you find one species or one genus, at least that's, it's all over the world. There's no way that this animal could have, you know, if, if, if South America was always where it is and Africa is always where it is and, and Australia is always where it is, then how the hell did this thing, they don't swim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did this thing get everywhere? Right. You know, so there, there's a, there were a lot of fossils like that. They're, they're showing the continuity of the tectonic plates. And there's a lot more geology that I don't understand well enough to explain it. Yeah. How, how, um, how they identified the, you know, a mountain range in Scotland, for example, matches the Appalachians, that they were once the same mountain range split by, uh-huh. the, by a continental division. Yeah, and it seems like, the, the way it looks is like India is pushing into China and it's pull, pushing up mountains. And if you pull yep. it back the, the, at the rate that the plates are moving, it's like so many inches or whatever, centimeters per year. I have no idea. But if you actually re- rewinded that, you would see the puzzle pieces start to fit together slowly over time, which is yep. to me, that was like, that's like, that's a slam dunk. Like now there's nothing. How do you refute that? Well, I mean, what is, what is, <laughs> I don't even think apologies even go in that direction. I don't even think they even try to go there. Well, there was a guy that tried to refute that. Uh, he was not a professional scientist. He was a comic book art, a comic book artist. And he tried to argue that, that the earth was inflating. <laughs> what? what does that mean? Well, the, the, he, what he did was he, he cut out the continents and he, he taped them all together on a balloon and he got them all to fit. Uh, he had to jerry rig a couple of things, but he managed to get them all to fit on a, on one small balloon. And yeah. then when you you inflate the balloon, then the oceans appear where you would expect the oceans to appear. Oh, and it was a nice demonstration. Oh, that's actually pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a nice demonstration for the video. Yeah, but it it, it, it like I said, there, were, there had to be some things that were that were changed you know, in some some corners where it really didn't match up that way, not the way right. it, part of it did, but not all of it. Yeah. So now let's get into evolution. That's, this is the big one. I always hear all the time. This is the big, this is the big talking point from theists is there is no transitionary fossils. They don't exist. I mean, I, 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 I this is famous. This is video. I can't remember the guy's uh, name. Ray, Com- it, it, this is kind of, this is kind of unfair of me because Ray Comfort is probably the very bottom of the creation's barrel. He's the worst of the bunch. And I've listened to Kent Hovind talk, okay? So when I say Ray Comfort is really, really stupid, I'm saying something. Behold, the atheist's nightmare. Now, if you study a well-made banana, you notice it has a point at the top for ease of entry. It's just the right shape for the human mouth. It's chewy, easy to digest, and it's even curved toward the face to make the whole process so much easier. Seriously, Kirk, the whole of creation testifies. Uh, this guy has written a book. It's called Billions of Missing Links, in which he argues that the, the standard creationist trope, there are no transitional fossils. And he says it over and over again in his debate. In particular, he announces flatly that we don't understand how whales evolved. He says there are no whale transitional fossils, which, of course... You know, I, I just I just sit there and rattle off a long list of them. Uh, you know, I, I mention all these things like Pachycetus and, and Rhodocetus and Ambulocetus and all these really cool whale, whale fossils that are out there. And, and he's sitting there sort of denying them all. And then he tells me he's never heard of them before. <laughs> said to him, there is no transitionary fossils. And then he said back to him, yes, there is. And he named off like 20 of them. And then Ray Comfort response was, I've never heard of those. And he was like, I know. <laughs> I can tell you never heard of them. That's just so good, dude. But so yeah, let's, let's talk about the transitionary fossils. The, the, one of the things that creationists do is they have to distort everything. They can't 
they can't they can't acknowledge what evolution actually is <laughs> right so we're talking about changes in populations not individuals over many generations not one single lifetime and these are uh incremental uh cumulative so that it's not one thing turning into a completely different, fundamentally different thing. So the creationists always say whenever there's a new species of fruit fly or finch or whatever, they say, well, it's still a fly or it's still a fish or whatever, right? Well, of course it is, which is why we are still apes and birds are still dinosaurs. That's how evolution actually works. But the creationists have to create a straw man parody where a pine tree gives birth to an elephant. <laughs> I think they've ever, I think they've said that too before. Yeah, it has to be so bizarrely distant that that the children are not even related to their parents. Right. And you get to a point where you have to wonder is there there's there's no chance that the creationist read a science book and interpreted that. Right. You know, that's that's a deliberate distortion. Yeah. They do not want to know what the reality is. They know what the reality is, but they want to make believe something else. So this is all pretend, literally. Uh, it, Jesus has a whole lot more to do with, it has a whole lot more in common with Santa Claus than he does with George Washington. <laughs> There's, yeah, because it's, it's literally pretend. Yeah. It really I have is. a bumper sticker on my truck that says God is just pretend and it's it's a completely true statement. Yeah, and and you know what I noticed is like the people on the top, the real charlatans, they know that their audience is looking for answers that they that they 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 want that validation. They're not looking for truth. They want them to be told, yeah, Jesus is real. They that so they know that they have that advantage. So they can say whatever they want and not get checked on it. Yep. So they can just say Oh, evolutionists think that a duck's going to give birth to a, a hippo, and they'll all laugh. And, oh, that's ridiculous. That's and not thing, what any evolutionist is saying, though. <laughs> exactly. Like with Ray Comfort, he brought up this one thing where he, he was on the 700 Club when he said, let's pretend that I'm an evolutionist for a moment. You know, there's a big bang and life begins because those two are not separated by 10 billion years. There's, there's, <laughs> It's a big bang and life begins. And then he says, and then at some point, the first dog evolves. So he, what he's describing is an amorphous mass of meat sitting around on the ground for millions of years, suddenly grows eyes, legs, and a tail and becomes a dog, specifically a male dog that then has to go wandering around looking for a female dog to mate with. Cause there had to be another lump of hamburger that turned into a female dog. <laughs> now, is there any chance that Ray Comfort is so staggeringly stupid that he thinks that's what evolution teaches at all. No, it, after all of the decades that he's been doing this with everybody correcting him every day, you think really that anybody, anybody could even be that dumb? I don't think so. I think he knows. I think he's, I think it's too profitable in the position that he's in to keep going. $4 million a year and he has a multi-story house on the beach in Monterey or, or where is it? Uh, um, not Monterey. It's one other, it's another coastal city that begins with an M. I can't remember. Malibu. Yeah. I think I can't remember where, where he is I exactly, know, yeah, probably. but, but yeah, so he has a very lucrative li living and all he has to do is pretend he doesn't know anything. Right. Pretend not to be able to understand things and, and preach it people. And then keep telling people that there's no transitionary fossils, even though there is. It's a foundational falsehood. The reason I wrote the book about it is because there's a handful of falsehoods that the, that the believer cannot admit. Right. They will not admit that there are transitional species. It doesn't matter that you give the definition. It doesn't matter that you show all the proof. It doesn't matter that you show lists of them and show how they all fit and why they are all transitional. They're because the believer is a believer. He's a make-believer. So he's going to plug his ears and close his eyes and scream, yeah, 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 I can't hear you because he desperately needs to make believe something else. Right. And you know what's fascinating is that for some reason, evolution sounds crazy, but a talking snake and, <laughs> and angels and stuff doesn't sound crazy. There isn't a part of religion that isn't crazy. And I don't just mean Christianity. I mean all of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just just every. If you want to know how create how crazy religion is, just study one that you didn't grow up with. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Sikhism, 
Uh, Islam, if you're not familiar with Muslims, just, you know, read the Quran and just think, this the whole is thing. nuts. How does anybody believe this? It really is. You know, people, you study, you to study Hinduism. If you're a Westerner and you read Hinduism, you're like, this is absolute insanity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The but, then, but then you Vedas were raised. Wild. We were raised with these most ridiculous of all fables that all of them contradict each other. And we're just supposed to ignore that.